guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to film a camp q and I feel like I haven't filmed one in ages. I probably have but it feels like I haven't. I was supposed to film this with a friend from camp. I did film this with a friend from camp but it was for his uni project and we ended up having to film it in a cafe in Liverpool and there was music on in the background and I'll get copyrighted if I post it. So I'm just going to refilm it whilst I'm at home, go over a lot of the same questions just because I feel like it was actually really helpful and really useful, the kind of questions that people asked. So yeah, I'm going to jump straight into it. Try not to ramble and I hope you enjoy. Okay, first question is tips for traveling all by yourself. Now I'm going to film a separate video on this. I'm going to film a post camp travel video, kind of like I've had a lot of people ask about traveling in general after camp, how much it costs, where to go, different things like that. So I'm going to film that and then I think I'll do maybe a separate tips for traveling alone because I forget that it's such a big thing and it's going to be coming around really quick. Like a lot of people will be flying out to camp soon. So Briefly, I would just say make sure you have things to do on the plane. Make sure you have things to keep yourself occupied. Obviously, you'll normally have like a screen to watch films and stuff. But I always like taking books, headphones, having maybe like a podcast to listen to, things that are going to just help you feel like quite relaxed and chilled and excited about going. Another big tip is just to try and get in touch with people that are going to your camp. Like try and actually just have conversations with people. They might be flying around the same time as you. So just having someone that you can talk to is always really helpful. And lastly, just that I'll quickly talk about in this video before I can say go into a deeper video another time is just to know that you're not really in it on your own. Even if you're traveling by yourself, there's so many people at the airport or when you arrive that you can just ask for help the airport staff are always so helpful if you're not sure where you need to go or you're not sure how something's going to work just go and ask someone and honestly they will be so so helpful and they'll be able to let you know whatever you need so yeah don't worry about it try and just think about it as an exciting thing you're going to be going to camp and yeah the end goal is going to be so exciting okay next up is what are some of the bad things about camp because i only ever hear the good stuff i had someone ask me this question on a tiktok live and it was kind of like, oh, like, why do you only ever talk about the good things about camp? Like, why never the bad things? From personal experience, I haven't had a bad camp experience. I wouldn't go back to camp each year if I'd had a really bad experience at camp or in the US or traveling. Like, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to go back to camp if negative things had happened personally to me. So I know people that have had bad experiences at camp. It's not my experiences to talk on. So when people ask me this question, it's always a little bit weird because I can't just make negatives up. I have had the most incredible positive experience every time that I've been to camp. Yes, there's hard parts to camp. There's times when you're tired and exhausted, but that comes with the job. It's not a negative of camp. It's kind of like a known thing. So I think if you're already trying to find the negatives, it's not a good sign personally because it is such a positive experience. It's one of the best things I have ever done. And the things I've gained from it have been absolutely insane. And I wouldn't go back if I'd had a negative time at camp. So, so yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. There's definitely people that will have had negative experiences at camp and people that don't want to return to camps for whatever reason. But I can't talk on that because I haven't had a bad experience. So yeah, it's not to say that there won't be things that go wrong at camps for any reason, but I can only go off my experience and what I've actually had at camp, which has been the most incredible positive thing since 2018 when I started going. So yeah, I can't really touch on that. But like I said, please don't try and look for all the negatives because that could be one person's experience compared to thousands of other people's incredible experiences. So yeah, something to maybe think about. Okay, next question is how do days off work? Surely you can't go with other staff from your bunk or can you? This is a really good question actually. And Something that will, again, depend camp by camp. I'm not sure how other camps do their days off, but at my camp, we have staff days off are on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So all specialist counsellors have a Wednesday off. So if you teach tennis or football or soccer or basketball or gymnastics, dance, anything specialist, you will have a Wednesday off. Because at my camp, we have something called Lazy Wednesdays. I love a Lazy Wednesday. And it's just kind of exactly what it sounds, a Lazy Wednesday, because the activities aren't open. It's a very, like, chill, slow day, which is really nice. Like, a little reset for, like, counsellors and the kids. And then general counsellors will be split between a Tuesday and a Thursday day off. Obviously, days off in your bunk will depend on how many staff you do have in your bunk. When I was in freshman B. We had seven counsellors in the bunk and 10 kids and a lot of us had the same day off because there were so many of us. But as the kids get older, they have less counsellors. So it might be that you don't have the same days off. It normally works at my camp. If there's say four counsellors in a bunk, two of them will be specialists and two of them will be generals. So chances are obviously the two specialists will have the same day off, but the two generals will be on separate days. But it always works really well. Like you'll find Obviously, there'll be so many people on your days off anyway, but it will definitely be crossovers with people in your division. So obviously a division is just kind of like the whole the whole age group, whereas your bunk would just be like a small 
amount of kids in that division if that makes sense so yeah it's a really good question to ask on an interview is just how time off works how the split works between counselors because it's something quite interesting to know but that's how it works at my camp okay next question is how to make long distance relationships work when at camp i've had so many people ask me this question and it's something I'm going to make a full video on because I think it's, like I say, so many people have asked about it. So I think it'd be really important and hopefully helpful to give some of like my tips for long distance relationships. So yeah, I'm going to, again, quickly touch on the fact that just try and stay in touch as and when you can, but also make sure you're both going into camp with the mindset that you're not going to be able to talk and call for hours on end every single day. It's just impossible. So I think as long as you have that expectation that it is going to be a little bit hard for communication, you're not going to be able to stay in touch the same way you would normally but to know that there are times to check in and give them a call home you can definitely find the time to do that but also make sure you find a balance between staying in touch but also enjoying your time at camp because it's going to go so so fast and you'll literally be at home before you know it so make sure you really embrace and enjoy it whilst you're there but yeah i'm going to go into more detail in another video but but hopefully that helps for now okay next question is what is color war i love this question and when me and ben filmed this yesterday it's actually so hard to describe colour war, I think, to people that have not been to camp before because it's such, even for someone that's been to camp before, colour war is a lot to process. Like, it's such a big, exciting event, but it's crazy. Like, at my camp, it's a five-day tournament, essentially, when the whole camp is split into two teams, blue and white, which are camp colours. And there's literally just, like, the most fun, crazy activities for five days straight, and then there'll be a winner at the end of it. So some examples of things we do, like, you do your everyday activities, but, like, just, like, colour war theme. So you might have, like, basketball or golf, and they'll try and make it, like, colour war, so it would just be your division split into blue and white, and then there'll be some crazy big events, like rope burn, which is where counsellors take part in two teams and have to build a fire and then burn this rope, and it's such an incredible event. It's one of my favourite favorite color war events actually one of my favorite things at camp we have frozen t-shirt which is where four t-shirts get frozen and the generals from color war have to like smash the t-shirts and get into the t-shirt and it's honestly the energy and excitement that comes from those kind of events during color war is insane it's a really intense few days it's the last few days before camp so it's a lot of fun it can be exhausting but it's one of my favorite parts of camp and it normally finishes i think two or three days before camp ends and that's when we start getting the duffels back and then we pack all the things away and just start like prepping for the end of the summer so yeah so much fun i'm not sure if color is different at other people's camps if you have color and it's different please let me know because i'll be so intrigued okay next question is do camps accommodate different dietary preferences intolerances for counselors again something that you'll need to ask a camp specifically at my camp they are brilliant with accommodating for people that have dietary needs or intolerances or different things and we actually have someone that works at camp that kind of just specializes in that for campers and counselors so normally beforehand you'll obviously be able to let them know of any like food preferences or allergies or intolerances anything like that so camps aware anyway and yeah they're really really accommodating at my camp and super super helpful if you need anything to do with that so yeah definitely something to ask a camp because i'm not sure how other camps do it okay next question is what's some advice you'd give to someone who wants to go to camp but is also scared too this is honestly like that it's so normal to feel scared first off it is so normal to feel nervous and overwhelmed about the whole thing because it's a huge thing to do and one thing i always try and say to people that are either thinking about going to camp or going for the first time is to just know how amazing of a thing this is that you're doing and how proud of yourself you should be and just to remember and remind yourself that it is the shortest space of time like people that have been to camp before can vouch for the fact that the summer will genuinely be over in the blink of an eye it goes so fast it's sometimes an eight week program nine weeks and then you can travel after you can come straight home if you want to there's no it's one thing like it's not a permanent thing it's a really short summer experience and one of the best things i've ever done and something that you'll definitely need to research into yourself and just really work out if it's right for you but if you're already thinking about wanting to go now and it's on your list of things you want to do think about how you'd feel in five ten years time if you hadn't done it Try and ask yourself if you'd regret it or not, if you didn't even give it a go. Because um, that's all you need to do is just give it a try and see how you go. And it could be the most incredible thing that you ever do. And you could meet some amazing people and have the best time. So yeah, if it's on your mind now, it's probably a sign to try and just give it a go. Okay, next question is, did you have experience with children before you did camp for the very first time? So yes, I did. I have coached gymnastics since I was about 14 years old. I qualified when I was 16, qualified again at 18 and have coached it full time at times. So yeah, I have always had experience working with kids. I've worked in schools, I've taught PE, I've done different things. You don't need to have that level of experience to go and work at camp. 
the more experience you can gain, the more beneficial it's going to be. I have some people message me and say, oh, like, I really want to go to camp, but I have no experience with kids. Like, what can I do? And I personally would really like not advise going to camp if you have no experience working with kids. Think about how hard it's going to be to go into an environment where you're around kids 24 seven and you've never done anything like it before more for yourself it's going to be a really hard adjustment and you don't know you're actually going to like it if you've not worked with kids so camp at the end of the day is a cultural exchange program but it's something that that's at the forefront of this program is working with kids so for your benefit and for theirs and everyone else involved having experience is going to be so beneficial to everyone and like I say you don't have to have massive amounts of experience but just try and go and like volunteering I don't know your, your local like brownies or guides or into a school or at like a sports club to do something that's just going to give you also an advantage when you're applying like having that kind of experience looks so good on an application but also to know that you actually enjoy working with kids and it's something that you can see yourself doing full-time especially now that 2024 applications are closed and it's like people prepping and looking at 2025. You've got so much time before next summer to try and get as much experience as possible. So try and just put yourself out there, have a little look at the things you can do because it's only gonna help you further down the line whilst you're at camp and also for the whole process when you're applying. Okay, last question I'm gonna talk about in this video is about fancy dress and themes to pack for. Again, I wanna do a whole video on kind of like spirit like a themed events lookbook I think I'm going to do like different categories so I'll go into it in more detail in that video but my favorite kind of themes at camp are always jerseys animals pajamas Hawaiian I always feel like I miss them out tight and bright neon um sometimes we'll do like blackout themes or whiteout themes obviously your camp colors to have are really important so for me it's blue and white and um, try and make sure you have things that can double up for different activities for example I've just bought a really cool blue and bright green skirt that I can wear like every day because it's like a score like an active score and I can also wear it for tight and bright and neon things so make sure you have things that are going to double up don't just take something that you can only wear once and for one thing because for example when we have in orientation we do like a big orientation themed dodgeball and everyone's on a different team so you could bring something that's animal themed and not be on the animal team it might come in handy down the line but if you can only wear it for one thing it's quite hard to make use of it for other things and sometimes it can just waste space in your suitcase but yeah i'm gonna stop there i have a lot more questions so i think i might do other parts to this video because i had so many good questions come through so yeah i'm just gonna do these for now and i'm also gonna crack on with those other videos because i feel like this has given me so many more ideas the questions people are asking because there's videos that can go into a lot more detail with it so yeah thank you so much for watching guys if you have any questions at all or need anything to do with camp prep whether it's for this year or next year or whenever please feel free to reach out i'm always more than happy to help but yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video